The Bible uses personification when speaking of God, saying, God personified? Yeah, I can just see him saying, Oh no, it's you two again. What did I do to deserve such a set of cretins as my followers? Why me? Oh why? Is it because of all the shit in the Old Testament? Look, you all just gotta get over that. It was a dark time. I was going through some stuff. I have learned from my past mistakes and anything else I can say that might get me out of this. Well, anything but an actual apology and an earnest attempt to fix things. Why the f*** would I do that? That the trees of the field clap their hands, the hills sing, the stones cry out in praise of him because who he is and what he's done. A song with lyrics along the lines of, Oh Lord, you're a genocidal bastard, you support slavery and sacrifice, you let your favourites get away with the worst things ever, and don't seem to care if the innocent suffer. All powerful perhaps, all knowing maybe, but all good is ironically a joke of biblical proportions. It's that song, right? The trees lift their branches and worship to him. The flowers blossom to his glory. Ah, <laughs> the flowers blossom to his glory. Sorry, but that's just too funny. The flowers blossom because they have to. Because that's how they evolved to procreate. They make themselves attractive to pollinators. And I don't know what the technical term is, but like seed shifters? You know, if you take the F out of that, it still works. LOL. And the birds sing us wonderful praises. This is all another classic case of, oh, these things are pretty, therefore God. Which is still without a doubt one of the most asinine arguments for God ever. I mean, seriously, first off, they do those things, that's how they work. If there was a G-man or no, they would carry on regardless. And second, the amount of people who make that argument and go on to completely ignore the significant amount of disgusting painful and just downright horrible things in the world is surprising or they just blame those things on the favored cop out but those were satan though when sorry i keep forgetting that the all-powerful god can't do anything about him how silly of me but yet you really can't have it both ways guys the nice stuff can't be proof of god while the horrible stuff doesn't count that's not how this works and he's standing right there beside you what are you talking about? There's no one beside me. The only thing is, well, let me explain via the medium of joke. What's the difference between a pile of dead bodies and a Ferrari? I'm not standing next to a Ferrari. Is that right, God? Oh, where the f did you come from? Sneaky little bastard. He needs to stop moving in mysterious ways. It freaks me out. Imagine now that you're back looking at that incredible painting and there's a man beside you who is raving about it just as much as you did. Oh no, don't make me imagine being near people. They're disgusting, don't you know? That the hair on their bodies will just keep growing and growing and won't stop no matter how much you cut it. It's f***ing gross. Everybody knows that they should be covered in a chitinous exoskeleton. Now that shit is hot. Anyway, so he's raving as much as I did. Well, I seem to recall saying that I wouldn't be that bothered. So apparently there's a guy stood near me just kind of being there. Brilliant. But when he finds out that the person next to him is the actual painter, he spits on him. <laughs> That's fucking amazing. Can you imagine? Wow, this is such a great painting. Oh, why, thank you. I worked really hard on it. You son of a bitch! I'll kill you! Yeah, that guy sounds kind of unhinged. Now, how does that compare to someone saying that they don't believe in invisible people and that there is no evidence for them having done anything? I don't think they are even remotely the same thing, do you? But I have a funny feeling that Kirk has a different take on that. He cusses him out and for some unknown reason adamantly denies that the painting even had a painter. I mean, I know what your comparison is supposed to be, but it doesn't make sense. A, this idea that the both of you are just completely jizzing your pants over this painting. Well, in my experience, believers and non-believers tend to have different perspectives, funnily enough, where the theist might be amazed at God's whatever most of the time, but your general workaday atheist is more like, oh, that's cool. So this over-top reaction to someone claiming that they painted the painting is just not the same kind of headspace. And again, it's not that there's a guy there. Told you before, God doesn't reel. So it's like there's no one there and you're stood beside the nothing going, isn't it amazing how this nothing painted that picture? 
at which point the other guy will either refute that nothing can paint pictures or more likely do whatever they can to get away from the crazy man who thinks that paintings only come from invisible people. Then he says the unthinkable. He says... Something stupider than what you're about to say? No, that's impossible, because literally everything you ever say is the dumbest thing anyone has ever uttered. It would be impressive if it didn't make my brain meat do the liquefy and run down my back. Feels pretty gross and I insist that you stop. It happened by accident. No, 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 no. That's not what anybody who refutes your claim is saying, you dense motherfucker. The claim is that it happened without the need for G to the O to the double D. Two Ds for a double dose of his pimping. It happens via natural causes. And you can argue, oh, but God did them causes, and I can ignore you for still providing zero evidence for that claim. Good job. So when you look at a building, you know there was a builder. When you look at a painting, you know there was a painter. But when you look at creation... Are we still doing the f***ing watchmaker argument? Are we serious? How many times has that one been debunked? We must be up to at least infinity plus one times by now. And yet here you are. Or at least, here is some poor sap still peddling that stupid bullshit. I see you too, that is Ray and Kirk, are no longer brave enough to go out into the wild and try and sell that specific nonsense to people. Probably afraid of being mocked to death all over again. That or people recognise them now and run for the hills as soon as they can say, can I ask you a big brain a question? You don't know that there was a creator. Right. Yeah, no, you don't know that there was a creator of the universe because we do not have any universe creators to compare them against. We have building creators and painting creators, and we of course have the most valuable of all of mankind's creators, the whiskey creators. But so far, we have yet to meet or see any evidence of a person or thing that creates universes. So to assume that there is one, and that is how universes come to be, is an assertion without evidence. And an assertion without evidence can be dismissed by a drunk guy shouting to himself incoherently, aka a Sursic video. That's what much of this world does. What, Vox Pops? No, that's what you and your sugar daddy Ray do. I don't know of anyone else that thinks that they can use Vox Pops to do anything other than maybe grab a slice of random man on the street opinions. But it seems you two genuinely believe that it's a legitimate form of debate and a way to prove whatever asinine point you were making definitively. It's completely ridiculous and hilarious. So you can at least keep doing that bit. The creator is right beside them and they blaspheme his name. They refuse to give him due praise for who he is and for what he's done. You know what, you're right. I will give your totally real God TM everything he has coming to him. Yo God, why the f did you make peaty whiskey? That shit is the only whiskey I cannot drink, specifically cause it's f***ing nasty. Shit tastes like freaking TCP. Why would anyone allow such a monstrosity to exist? Anything I cannot or do not want to consume really should just be banned. And yet you allow it all. What a joke. Or to give him thanks for the gift of life. Ah, life, the gift that keeps on giving, mostly pain and suffering. If you are like me and think that parents shouldn't expect their kids to do pretty much dick all for them, simply for the fact that they forced them to exist, I mean, at least be people that your kids like, for Christ's sake. And I mean, show me a child who asked to be born and I will show you an idiot. You know, you for believing them and bringing them to me. You'll also understand that every moment of suffering a child has in their life is directly the result of your parents bonking. But now, you can conveniently shift the blame up the chain to God. He's the one who gave you the gift of life, not me. Nope. Also, that probably means that God owes a shit ton of backdated child support to basically everyone living on the planet. So don't expect much out of that bum. He must be broke as f Bloody deadbeat God. And then some of them do the unthinkable. They agree with you? No, that's not unthinkable. That's unthinkering. Because, you know, anyone who agrees with you two clowns is probably the mental equivalent to a bag of soiled diapers and cat vomit. No, no, wait. There's probably bacteria in that bag. Yeah, you're right. That's far too much brain power. They deny his existence and say that the entire miracle of creation was just an accident. Nobody says that. Well, they do say the first bit because, well, you know, he's not real. 
there's no good reason to believe in him from our perspective. And the thing is, every argument that you come at us with to try and change that is invariably extremely stupid. Or rather complex and still stupid. But no, universe not accident. It's just currently not as well understood and explained as some other things we know about the universe. And no, 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 God did it is not an explanation. It's a shrug and then casually shitting your pants and wondering why everyone around you is scrunching up their faces. Do you realize your brain is more sophisticated than the most sophisticated computer that man has ever yeah. made? Brains? Sophisticated? And comparing them to computers, that doesn't even make sense. You are comparing apples and spaceships, not even the same type of thing. But even if we want to grant him that, although be careful, give him an inch and they'll just take your soul. But even if brains are more complicated than the most sophisticated single computer right now, doesn't mean that we won't have more sophisticated computers in the future. And of course, there's a pretty obvious thing. We have the fucking internet, and if you think of that as one giant computer, I cannot imagine how much more complexity it has than a single human brain. But I imagine it's a bite more complicated. Get it? That was a computer joke. Oh uh, yeah. And your eyes are more sophisticated and more well made than any camera lens man has ever made? Oh fuck off. Again, not even remotely the same thing. Also, even if you want to make that comparison, and let's say that eyes are more complicated than cameras and their lenses, because comparing it to just the lens is obviously idiotic. Well, remind me what the optical zoom range of the human eye is again, or how much of the infrared spectra they can see. Oh, it can't actually do any of those. See, complexity doesn't actually mean capability. I can do an extremely complicated drawing of a face. Doesn't make it good when a simple piece of line art, you know, actually looks like a face. In fact, over complexity is usually the sign of something not having been designed by a single mind, but the result of iteration over time, meaning that random shit gets left in but you can't take it out without breaking it. If God had designed human eyeballs, they wouldn't be complicated. They would be simple, straightforward, and far less prone to catastrophic failure. Yeah, definitely. So you're saying your brain happened by accident? No, it didn't happen by accident. What happened? Years and years of successive evolution. Now why would they do that? Oh, quick, move away from him before people realise that we have no response to that that's worth a single damn. Phew, wouldn't want people realising that we are dumb as all the f**ks. That would be terrible. Although honestly, don't know why you bother, it's not like your audience will even notice. Too busy chewing on their toes. Well, the Bible tells us that it is specifically because of his moral government. Oh, and there I was thinking it's because he doesn't exist. And even if he does, there's literally nothing in the universe that gives even the slightest hint at his existence. Stupid me! It's because of his moral government. Whatever the f*** that means. I mean, it says in the old Biblo, an infallible book that definitely isn't chock full of nonsensical tall tales, many of which we can prove categorically false or anything like that. No! God demands moral responsibility. And that especially is what flies in the face of this sinful world. All right, it's because God has morals. I mean, yeah, that's technically true. I mean, assuming that he exists, probably as some sort of cosmic prank against me. But in the blue balls, there are some morals that God has. Usually when we say morals, we mean like good ones. Gods, they are. Well, let's just go from, say, basic bitch tier to kind of completely and totally f***ed up. But even with that shit, that's not why I don't believe in God, man. It's because, and get this right, I don't think he f***ing exists. No matter what your man-written book tells you, that doesn't change the reason why. Especially when it comes to your cartoon character of a God. If I did believe, and I agreed that that's exactly what you say, and he is absolutely the moral arbiter of everything, maybe I would have a different opinion. But he doesn't, so I don't. You proudly take a friend through your new house and you say, didn't the builder do a great job? <sighs> and now we're just getting into the most ludicrous claim made in this entire video. A claim so completely insane that I think Ray and Kirk should be institutionalized for life 
for even giving the notion a second of thought. I don't have any friends, dumbass. Wait, before you go, I have something super important to tell you. It's life or death. It will change everything forever. Nope. Wait, it's gone. Oh well, probably wasn't important. But while I have you, don't forget to comment, subscribe and notify. And if you want more of my smexy voice, check out Mrs. Six channel Spoon Star Stories, where I narrate and voice all the videos. And she does the work. And if you want to support the channel, check out the merch store for cool t-shirts, or check out Patreon, memberships and PayPal to support directly. Finally, Follow me on the medias of social to get completely pointless guff and to keep up on the latest releases. Oh, I just remembered what I was going to tell you. Whatever you do, don't touch the-